Hi everyone, welcome to this flow. We're gonna go through some handstand hops and just play with a little bit of upside down skill work. We'll go through a full warm up and sort of a static and dynamic warm up. And then we're gonna play with getting upside down with some tucks, some hops. We can use the wall, so maybe have some wall space available. And for one of our stretches where we're gonna open the shoulders, I'm gonna elevate my hands on dumbbells, but you might wanna use a chair or you can again just press your hands against the wall for this one so you don't really need any kit at all we'll begin just by working into our wrists taking them into extension if you bring yourself down and just have the fingertips facing towards your knees and then from here the closer the hands are the more gentle that's going to feel on the wrist so if you can take them a bit further and get a deeper stretch then go for it take them a bit further away and we can make some circles and just move around into the wrist. As you're working into this, into this wrist extension, grip down through the top pads of your fingertips rather than sinking the weight down into the wrist. So we're gonna grip into the mat. That will also come in handy when we're balancing, when we try to use our hands like feet. So if you want a deeper stretch, start to take the hands a bit further away. Keep moving around, you can hold it still or keep it dynamic. We'll also have a go at bringing the heels of the hands together and we can just rock side to side. As we go through this warm up, just as we're gently moving, start to bring your awareness to your breathing and think about gentle inhales and exhales through your nose. So taking note of how that breath feels so that we're using the diaphragm. This is also going to really help when it comes to stability and being able to balance rather than taking big breaths in through your mouth. Last one for extension. Have your fingertips pointing forwards and we're just going to lean the shoulders forward gripping with the fingers and you'll see as the shoulders go ahead I'm gripping and pulling the fingers into the mat notice the finger knuckles are actually bending as I'm pulling back into the mat with the arms straight and again this is what's going to come in handy when we're balancing say for example kicking up against the wall or maybe you hop up into the space and you feel your hips or your feet just going that little bit too far pulling into the fingers is going to help pull you back and help you start to balance from here, let's go into wrist flexion. We're gonna take the backs of the hands onto the ground. Once again, if I bring them nice and close to me, this is gonna feel a little bit more gentle on the wrist. You can start to load them a bit further, maybe taking them even further away from there. And maybe just rock back and forth or hold it. So keeping the arms straight, Think about turning the armpits of your elbows forwards. Still just gentle breaths in and out of your nose. And from here, we're going to move into a little bit of rotation followed by some strength work for a bit of muscle activation. So if you just release the hands from there, we'll make some circles, gently rotating one way and then the other way. Maybe even spread the fingers, draw some figure of eights, really pulling the fingers or spreading them as far apart as you can. You'll feel some heat building up into the hands. And then from here, let's go palms down again. So from this tabletop position, the further my shoulders lean into it, the more I'm gonna load in the, into this position, it will become more challenging. So you can sit further back to make it easier. We're gonna raise the heels of the hands up and down and once again, the shoulders have come forward. Now that's a little bit harder. I'm going to load them up. Lots and lots of volume. So working into the wrist flexors here, you'll start to feel a lot of heat into your forearm once we get through some high volume. So keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And once you start to feel lots of heat and muscle activation, you can rest on that one. And from there, we're going to work into the wrist extensors. Similar drill, backs of the hands onto the ground, fingertips point towards each other, elbows can bend. 
We're going to press into the backs of the hands, press into the tips of the fingers and then close the fist at the top. So rather than moving without intention, first of all, focus on muscle activation, pushing down and then closing up into that position with the fists on the ground and then back out, push and lift. Now, of course, once you get the hang of feeling that activation into the backs of the hands and the mat, you can pick up the pace, but focus on that intention. And doing this wrist prep is important before we spend time hand balancing because a lot of the time, especially if you're quite new to balancing, it can feel really intense to put all that weight through your wrist. So a bit of movement to open up the range and then something to work through the strength. But also, don't underestimate the actual strength you're going to build by balancing on your hands. Therefore, the more time you spend on them, the stronger they're gonna get anyway. At the start, especially, just always adding this prep in is going to help build more strength and you're less likely to get those niggles. So that's for our wrist. We've gone through flexion, extension, rotation, and some raises. We're going to move into the shoulders. So first thing I want you to do is either from a seated position or standing, doesn't matter. We're gonna raise the arms up, take the shoulders into flexion. Notice how that position feels. Do your ribs flare out? Are you limited in range, you get stuck here? And the only way to go higher is to actually extend. Let's try to keep the ribs down. Shoulder blades will elevate, raise the arms up and just see how does that feel. And we're gonna go into a drill and then retest it. Nice, simple movement. I'm just gonna use the dumbbells for this one, but you can press your hands flat against a wall or you can elevate your hands on top of a chair or a box. So roughly shoulder width. You can also mix your grips up and go different widths, that's fine. We want knees under hips. And from this position, we're gonna keep the arms straight. Breathe through the nose, take the head and the chest through towards the ground. So holding this position, gentle breaths. If you've got the hands elevated on a chair or on dumbbells like me, press down through the fingers as well. Keep drawing the lower ribs in. So you can stay there or take one hand off and go one side at a time. So if I bring one hand down, the other hand elevates and I'm just going to move around a little bit more side to side, work into the lats as well. You can move up and down. Just finding any areas that might feel tight. You can also add some rotation, reaching through and open up. Same on the other side. One hand elevates, move across. Feel that into the lats all the way down into the hip. Move up and down. And let's add some rotation on this side as well, reaching through. You can draw the elbow back or extend the arm. and then release. From here, just retest that position. See how it feels. Maybe a little bit more open. We'll sit onto our bum and open into shoulder extension. Hands are going to be behind you, fingertips pointing back. Squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other and send your bum forward. And you don't have to be able to go particularly far, just go to where you can. Grip down through the fingers. This is also gonna help support the elbows so you don't sink into the elbows. So grip with the fingers. Maybe go a bit further, keep the chest open, avoiding hunching up. You can have knees bent or you can extend the legs. Great way to just loosen off some tension into the chest and the front of the shoulders into the delts. You can either stay there 
we'll go for a couple of reverse tabletops. We're just going to tuck the bum under, lift the hips, open the chest, lower down, we'll just do four more. So lifting up, open the chest, squeeze the glutes. Just going to where you can. Your hips might not come all the way up here, so even if they're down, just have that intention of drawing your chest open. One more. And then lower from there. So have a little shake out, test your overhead position again and see how that's feeling. And all we're going to do from here is get a little bit more dynamic and go into a bear crawl. So we're going into, say, a downward dog shape. We're going to send the bum back, lift the hips. You can bend your knees and just pedal through the feet. Extend one, extend the other, just alternate side to side. So from this position, shoulders are nice and open. That's what we want for our handstand. Feel the shoulder blades elevate, just like you will when you're pressing into the floor. And you can walk forwards, back. If you've got lots of space, move around the space that you're in. From there, this time, keep the arms straight. Walk the hips up as high as you can. And back again. Your hamstrings might not appreciate this one. You can bend your legs if you need to bend your legs. So let's try and get the hips up as high as you can. And that's gonna be important when we're going into our handstands, into our hops. We want those hips to go up as high as possible. Just one more. And back into that downward dog shape. We're gonna step one foot up outside, the hand into a deep lunge. Take it back, switch to the other side, working into the hips a little bit more now. A couple more. On this next one, step forward. You might need to lower your back knee. In this deep lunge position, we're opening up into that deep flexion in the hip. This is gonna help us in our hops, going into those tuck shapes. And I can have my hands on the floor, inside that foot, the hand closest to the front foot. We're going to reach that up and just hold it there. Breathe in and out of your nose. As you bring it back down, you can bring the hand down or base the other hand further out, draw the forearm down. Open up once more. From there, go back into your downward dog and switch, step it forward. Back knee lowers. Breathe into that space in the hips. We'll go for our rotation. So the hand closest to the front foot reaches up. Add that twist. And as it comes down, you can bring the hand down or the forearm down. From here, back in to that downward dog. We're going to some hip rotations. And for this one, you can do it from tabletop. So if you struggle with the downward dog variation, do it from down here instead. We're gonna raise one leg up, bend the knee, draw a nice big circle with that hip. We'll do three one way, then three the other way. Bigger the circle, the better. Take it open, nice big circle out. Take that leg down, again, or from your tabletop. Three circles one way, three circles the other way. Place that foot down. We're walking our hands back towards our feet now. You can bend the legs and just curl up standing. We'll come into some ostrich walks from here. We're going to step one foot forward. Think about hinging at the hips. Bring the hands down to where you can. Stand up. You should be feeling the hamstrings, not the back of your knee. The other alternative is to bend the back leg and hinge over the front leg. Come up and switch. And again, move around the space that you're in as much as you like. 
and come down a little bit deeper maybe. Stand all the way up between each one. And we can also start to add some little hops. So I'm now gonna bring my hands down, press. So hinge down, little hop, stand up. Nice little way to practice kicking off both sides as well. We tend to always have one side that's a bit more dominant. Nice little hops, think soft and light. Let the top leg pull you up and the bottom leg gently kicks. Don't try and catapult yourself into it. Couple more. And then from here, we'll come into a squat. We're going to move into some hops now, hopefully feeling a bit warmer. I've literally got a fire on, <laughs> so I'm very warm. We're going to go into some little hops, medium hops and bigger hops. And as you get more confident, we'll start to take those hips higher. You can, of course, use the wall. Keeping it nice and simple to begin with. From my squat position, which you might want your heels lifted or maybe your squat is around here. Just wherever your natural squat position is, I want you to let your hands fall naturally in front, press through the arms and just hop the feet. So tiny little frog hops. Making sure the elbows don't bend. Okay, we wanna keep those arms nice and straight. Maybe also go from the foot to the sides with some lateral hops from your squat, whatever that squat looks like. Hands go across, hop across. And again, press and hop. Nice to just mix it up. Do some lateral hops, do some hops forwards, do some hops backwards, play around a little bit. As you get more confident, I'm gonna think about pulling the hips up a little bit higher now. So the hands fall in front, let my hips come up and try to land soft. So I'm thinking about the hips trying to get further and further up above the shoulders. If you get a little bit freaked out, you suddenly get more air than you were expecting and you want to bail out, all I'm gonna do is hop, turn my hand out to the side and let my body turn. So let my hand move, and my body will turn with it. So lift up and hop out to the side. Okay, so that's where my hips are now coming higher. To get that really tightly tucked shape, I want to pull my feet in towards my bum. So I've gone little hop, bigger hop, and now the feet are gonna come up. And I've gone into that tighter ball-like shape. If this in the space is just feeling a little bit too scary right now, then maybe you're not getting the hang of that bail out by turning out a bit, then have a go using the wall. I'm going to use the wall as my target. I'm gonna go for about three hops. Start with a mini hop, a medium hop, and then a high hop. So from my squat, little hop, medium hop, all the way up, try to find the wall and come back down again. Do that a couple more times. If you're comfortable in the free space, keep playing around with those lateral hops as well, trying to get those hips up higher and higher. And we'll go again. Little hop, medium hop, full hop. Again, when you find the wall, if you find the wall, which don't worry if you're not finding it just yet. Lots and lots of practice with these. I definitely didn't get my hip straight up there first time. Uh, I would say once you find the wall, think about coming off it as slowly as you can. You're more likely to actually surprise yourself with a bit of air time and holding it than if you allow yourself to come crashing down. Okay, let's do that once more to the wall. Mini hop, pressing through the arms, medium hop, full hop. Find the wall. Now from here, maybe tuck, start to tuck the knees in and pull into your fingertips. That's then gonna pull the bum off the wall and we can come down. Okay, you might need a breather by now if you've not had one. So have plenty of rest between those attempts because you will get tired really quickly. 
and we'll have a little go at some lateral hops too. The lateral hops are quite like these as well because hopping out to the side, for me anyway, always felt a little bit safer, but it's always just that little bit scarier when you do get your hips up higher. So I like to use that drill where I move, let my hand move out of the way to help my body turn out of it to save me from body slamming. Okay, so let's go side to side for these next hops. Hands are gonna go across the body, press, jump nice and lightly, and again, and now let's try to send those hips up higher. And again, each time, I'm now gonna tighten that shape, try to pull my feet closer towards my bum. Makes you feel nice and light when you can really compress that shape. It's important to note that not everybody's shapes are going to look the same. You might struggle to compress at your hips, therefore your tuck might not be as much of a tight ball as somebody else's. So just work with the range that you have and have a little play with how tightly you want to draw your knees in, how tightly you can get your feet to your, how tightly you can get your feet to your bum and see what works for you. Let's go again, hands go across, try and pull those hips up. And again. And have a breather. So I always found, find <laughs> playing with some handstand hops before my session, one, they're fun, but also as you start to think about getting lighter with that movement, not landing so heavy, starting to feel those moments of, uh, sort of air time really starts to feel amazing. As I get into that balance, I need to then be able to use my hands like feet. So if you find a bit of a tuck hold, what we want to do is pull into the fingers, just as you would for your straight line handstand kickups. Pulling into the fingers will stop the body going over, which is where the wall drill can come in handy, because if, if my bum is on the wall, I'm gonna use my fingers to pull it off the wall. And then the heel of the hand, it's gonna be this constant rocking motion between the front and the back of the hand. It's really small, but that's gonna help you hold it there for longer, rather than just sinking down into your hands without actually gripping the ground. So you can play with some lateral hops or some normal hops going forwards. Try to find some height, have a little play for another couple of minutes and just see if you can find a little bit of air time. Again, just finding that tuck shape that feels good for you. rest whenever you need to. My hips are getting tired now. We'll go through one more hop against the wall. For those of you that might be using the wall to think about using your hands like feet. So maybe the hopping up isn't happening yet and you're struggling to get your hips anywhere near. But if you're comfortable with kicking up, you can kick up and tuck down. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna kick up to the top. From my handstand, eyes are gonna lift just between the thumbs so the head doesn't really crank back. I'm just gonna lift my eyes, bring my feet down the wall, pull into the fingers, slowly start to bring my feet off the wall. Don't worry if you're not tucking the knees right in. Just see if by gripping into the fingers, you can actually pull the toes off. Even if it's tiny little taps, maybe the knees can come in. Squeeze them in nice and tight. Pull into the fingers. Come down as softly as you can. So have a couple of goes, maybe with that variation. Seeing if you can just find a little bit of a hold and use that as a bit of a drill to practice. So once you've found the top, maybe you've kicked up straight line, tuck the knees down, 
we're looking at that space between the thumbs and I'm going to grip with the intention of pulling myself away from the wall really gently. It's not a fast movement, let it happen gradually. The thing you want to avoid doing is trying to kick your feet off the wall. So maybe we're up into that handstand, we've tucked down and then you're doing these toe taps where you're pushing yourself off and there's too much momentum and that's why we really want to feel the gripping to pull the feet away and you'll feel like you find a little bit of a hold from there. So the wall variation can really help build that awareness for our handstand hop in the space. We'll go for a couple more and then we're going to rest and stretch out. So use the wall or use the space, have a bit of a play, move forwards, hopping up, move side to side, going across. If you do find that hold, now it's that constant gripping through the fingers, slight push through the heel of the hand. I'm really drawing my knees in tight. If I want to turn out, hand can come out to the side or I can just hop back down. Okay, I think I've done enough hops. <laughs> if you've managed to keep going the whole way through that, well done. We'll stretch into the shoulders and go into some shoulder extension, into shoulder extension first. So if you have bottom of the floor, just like we did at the start, hands behind you, open the chest, squeeze the shoulders back, tuck the bum under and send it forward. Keep the chest open. And if you're breathing heavy like me, <laughs> try to relax and slow it down. I think nasal breath, gentle inhales, gentle exhales. Can help to add a slight pause on that exhale. So push all the air out of the lungs, breathe out. Add a slight pause for a few seconds, then a gentle breath in. Maybe add a slight pause at the top of the inhale, and then again, relax, exhale. Just feeling everything start to slow down. From here, we'll bring the bum back. I'm going to come forwards onto the mat. Go into a frog stretch. Take the knees wide. You can place cushions under your knees for this one. Inner edges of the feet are on the floor. You can stay on the hands or go onto the forearms. Gentle breath. Knees are as wide as they can go. Feel that stretch into the groin, into the hips, to the inner thighs. Maybe you can start to take the knees a little bit wider. From here we can bring big toes to touch, send your bum back towards your heels. And you can either make a cushion with the forearms, rest the forehead on top as you send your bum back or reach the arms out in front. So just allow yourself a minute or so to rest and recover. Again, just gentle breath. Nice, soft and light inhales and exhales. Almost bringing it to the point that you can barely hear it. I'm not done yet. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm not moved yet, so I'll just <laughs> head down and go.
When you feel ready, you can start to bring yourself up. Any other stretches you feel you might need to do, spend a couple more minutes if you like. Thanks for joining me for this handstand flow, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.